They say the best things in life are free. Today we're talking about five free things that you can do to improve your model railroad on coffee and trains. Welcome everybody to another edition of Coffee and Trains. Before we begin, I'm finishing up my Black Rifle Freedom Fuel Coffee and as always, I take it black with two sugars. So a lot of times in model railroading, we get caught up with what's the right tools to buy, what's the right locomotives to buy, what's the right rolling stock to buy, building kits to buy, all sorts of different things. So often we don't talk about the things that are totally free that we can do to make our model railroading experience better. And today I'm going to go over five of those things that can make your model railroad better. Let's get started. Number one is probably the one that if there's going to be the most of us guilty of it, it's going to be this one, and that is to clean up your model railroad space. Now, I am very, very guilty of this. <laughs> but that's something that I intend to work on. You know, a lot of times when we see a great model railroad, we don't see a mess around it. We see a beautifully clean and beautifully finished layout in a basement or somewhere else, or at least a place, a space that is organized. It doesn't have to be like a standard of clean, but having your space cleaned and organized is something that can really help out your model railroading experience because it does make your model railroad more aesthetically pleasing, and it's one less thing to worry about. I know that I've gotten frustrated tripping over things that I have left carelessly on the ground as I'm moving around my model railroad for construction, or that I can't find something like a good scenery material or a tool because I've left it somewhere because I didn't clean and organize my layout space. So clean up your layout space and keep it organized. It's something that I am guilty of not doing. And that is one thing you can do to make your model railroad experience better. My number two item is to figure out what you like about model railroading that you want to implement on your railroad. And you do this through research, which is totally free. Yes, you can technically say that the cost of an internet service provider makes it not free, but you're not paying for that specifically for your model railroad. And if you're watching this video, you've already got it in one form or another. So there's no additional cost here. So, but researching, looking at what other people have done on their model railroads and seeing things that you really like to implement can be inspirational for building your model railroads, can help you run your model railroads in a better way, and it can help you just get more enjoyment out of the hobby itself. So do your research and figure out what you like. That's one thing you can do that's totally free to make your model railroading experience better. Number three is to make a list of everything you have. Now, if you have a larger railroad, you just do this with your rolling stock, putting the, the road name and the number, and maybe taking a quick photo and putting it on a list. Uh, if you have a smaller railroad, you can get really detailed into cataloging all of your items, but you can catalog your rolling stock, your motive power, your scenery materials, your tools. You can basically have a list of everything that you have on your model railroad so that when you need to go buy new things or you're looking for something else to get, you don't accidentally purchase something twice or you don't overbuy so that you know what you have. So making a list not only is totally free to do, but it can actually save you money in the long run. A great example of this is I've accidentally bought several pieces of rolling stock twice at train shows because I totally forgot that I had them. Once I've made my list, it will more than likely eliminate that and it helps you zero in on the things that you actually want to spend money on. So making a list of everything you have and having a catalog is something you can do that's totally free that can make your model railroading experience better. My number four thing is to create a setting and a backstory for your model railroad. Now, if you're doing a prototype, this is very easy to do because you're modeling a real railroad and you can go look back at what the railroad hauled, where it hauled through. You can look back at historical photos. So it's very easy to build that story and modify it to work for your railroad. If you're doing freelance, go and look at what type of industries you want to model. And then you go look at where they are located in real life. And then 
you can build a setting around it. You can give a backstory to the town. A great example of this, if you want to do a coal hauling railroad in central Appalachia, those towns that are around those coal mines have a very specific look. The railroads had a very, very certain way of operating, and it's a way that you can build and give your model railroad purpose for operations. And it's fun to have a little bit of story. If you're doing freelance, you can name stuff after your family and friends or important things in your life. So building a setting and a background and a backstory for your model railroad is something you can do totally for free that's going to make your railroad feel a bit more personal too. The last thing I'm going to talk about today that's totally free to do is design an operation scheme for your model railroad. Now this is something that is very, very easy to do. You can do something as simple as the train game, which I designed. I have that linked right up here as well as in the description below. You can get as simple or as detailed as you want, but it's totally free to design all of this for your model railroad. Plus, once you have your operation scheme designed, you can take that and use it to influence what you're going to be purchasing for your model railroad, and it'll save you a little bit of money because it'll help you make a list of purchases that you need to make to operate your model railroad that way. So designing an operation scheme, a free thing that you can do to make your model railroad better. All right, guys, let's talk about some of the coffees that you guys are drinking. Patrick Halls says that he is drinking good old Maxwell House and Strong and Black. Cheers. That sounds always delicious. Nothing like a great classic. Uh, Dad Cooks says that he is drinking a dark roast Sumatra that is roasted locally. I do love good Sumatra, and it's always great when you can support a local business. Let's see here. Who else do we have? Needs to quit one at Gmail says Starbucks espresso. Probably need to drink one less cup of espresso on that one. Uh, Ken Shores says no mention of a community signature breakfast blend made in New Orleans. Well, fun fact, I actually ordered, I didn't order the breakfast blend, but I just ordered some of the community coffee. So I have that on the way. So you'll be hearing uh, me drinking some of that soon. Daniel Blanks says, have you tried anything from Brazil or Central America? Those tend to be naturally sweeter coffees. So I'll have to give that a shot. So thank you for that, Daniel Blanks. Christopher Bryant says that he is drinking Collectivo Velo French Roast Straight Black. Always love a good French roast. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Thank you for sending in the coffees that you're drinking. You just keep adding to my list of ones to try. I also want to give a big thank you to all of my patrons. They are listed right here. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, drink some coffee and happy railroading.